Right, so today, tubular locks. I just thought I'd do a short video with a bunch of tips that I found worked really well for picking what is a very common lock on things like vending machines and lockers and stuff like that. But you also find them on uh, motorcycle disc brake locks, all kinds of stuff. They're very commonly used and they vary in quality from okay to downright appalling. Um, they can be a bit tricky to pick and a lot of pickers sort of stay clear of them because they don't really know how to tackle them very well. Uh, the big challenge of these things is how to tension the lock and it's the spindle on the middle that you've got to apply tension to and you can get quite a lot of aftermarket tools things like this this is sparrow's goat this one's been modified fairly extensively to allow me to fit around various tubular locks but actually when you, when you start playing with these things you'll discover that this doesn't fit a lot of locks here's uh this one is a cam lock um, and it looks very similar I'll put them side by side this one's got like a hardened bead in the center to stop people drilling it and that can cause a problem with a tool like this you'll notice on my one I've cut a divot out in the center and that allows it to sit on top of the bead but there's another problem um, this gap here in the center between the, that wider lug and the pointy bit there which has been filed down that lug goes into that groove in the top of the lock and the other side of it jams against the body of that of that central central pin except on not on all locks <laughs> and it doesn't on this one so it just will literally swing from side to side not catching the lock or being able to uh, tension the lock with it. So it's no good for this kind of lock. It fits this Ace 2 here, this American one. That fits absolutely fine. The second problem is it actually stands up quite tall off the top of a lock, which kind of makes it unstable. So there's, there's two problems there. A, it doesn't fit some locks, and B, it, it's unstable. Um, but if you've got a broken pick you can cut one out of the body of the pick body I did this with a Dremel and if you compare the goat with my one and, and line them up you'll notice that the one I've cut is a bit smaller quite a bit smaller now the beauty of that is it fits on this lock beautifully, tensions it and actually sits quite low, which means it's very stable. You can really, on some locks, put a lot of tension on. And this particular one, I put notes on all my locks. <laughs> so I, when I go back to them months later, I know what I did. Um, this particular lock needs so much tension on it. This, this tool has got a really hefty curve in it. Um, which if you try to do with the goat on the lock, it will just ping off. It, it, it doesn't stay on the lock at all. So that's like tip number one, how to tension the things. Make your own tool. It'll cost you nothing if you use an old pick body from something you've snapped. And if you're beginning, you'll probably snap a pick because it happens to us all. The second thing is how do you pick this thing open? Well, you could have yourself a little probe again from a sharpened pick and how this works is you push these inside here you can see it there are little pins and you push the pins down and this isn't going to be a master class in how to pick these locks there's plenty of videos out there for that although the second tip is if you want to pick those pins don't use a straight pick like this because when you put one of these tension bars on it will almost certainly obscure a pin or two and, and if you've got a straight pick you've got to push down on that pin well it's going to be awkward 
But if you make yourself a pick, and in this case, this is made out of a piece of wiper insert, so it's stainless steel. It's got a nice little curve on it. And that allows me to curve around the tension bar so we don't have a problem. I can just literally get underneath things and push them in. So that will it'll save you a lot of pain and make picking quite a lot easier. Okay, next tip, tension. These things are, it is a mixed bag on how to tension these things properly. I always start, or I found works for me at least, is starting with just very light tension, which will enable you to set a few pins. And as you go around the lock rather tediously, um, you might start feeling that the pins aren't binding any longer. At that point, you can just increase the tension just a little bit more until something binds and you get an open. So let's just quickly do that. We'll, we'll have a go at picking this thing. I'll see if I can get the camera on it. It is actually really fiddly with the camera. Let's see what we can do. I'm just going to whip around this thing and just give it a quick pick. It's actually the lighting's terrible. So we go. The other thing you want if you're picking one of these things is a light that you can move about and that'll catch the pins differently. That one's set. Nothing on that one. That's set. That's set. Set. Nothing. Nothing. I think that might be set. That's set. Set. All right, so it's all gone a bit dead. I'm going to crank up the tension a little bit more. All right, there you go. Felt some core movement then. Set, set. Now, yeah, that's set. You may have to vary the tension on these things. They don't, it's not one size fits all. That's for certain. I think I've got just one pin. Outstanding. Is it this one under here? But also, if you don't get the tension right, they're very easy to overset. Ah, oh, there you go. That was that was that one was binding, just binding very very tightly. Now that one's under there set. A bit more light. There you go. That's open. Well, it's open to one position. And if you were going to open this lock properly, you'd actually have to pick it to three or four positions, which is a complete pain. And I'm not going to do that here because it's only so much time in a day. Okay. If you want to lock it back up again, you normally have to pick these things shut. And that is because this is the key. You'll notice on the top here, there's a little lug. If I try and put that in, it doesn't work. You cannot get that lug in because you've only got a gap up the top. 
And there's a lug on the inside, but it prevents it from sliding in while the lock is open. But if you've got two keys, and I have, you can grind the lug off of one of the keys. Keep the inner lug, lose the outer lug, like that. And then, once you've done that, you can put the lock in and unlock it again. All that lug does is stop the key going in. When the lock is open. So that's another tip. You can you don't have to pick these things closed again. All right, so something else will write it. I'm not going to pick it open because it's a bit of a faff, but I wanted to show it. This is another lock. This one's got a hardened bead on it. And again, so something I possibly didn't mention earlier in the video is if you cut a narrower gap for one of these locks and you've got a lock with the hardened bead in, if, it ja if, the, the, if the gap is narrow enough, you can avoid the bead altogether. So you don't actually need to cut a cutout in here because it'll jam on like a, th a third or a quarter of the lock. So that's a bit of a tip there. Some of these, like this one, and I think you can see it on the camera, don't have a round pin in the center. This one's actually hex, hex shaped. So this one doesn't have a cutout in the core at all, which means if I go to use this fella, the goat, to open this, A, this bit doesn't fit in because it just jams. There's no insert for it to fit in here. And this foot lug here, which would normally work on a lock like this, simply doesn't fit. It's too big. I can't tension that just gets stuck in there. And now I've jammed, yeah, it gets free now. So how do you tension that center pin? You need another broken pick, that's what you need. This is a pick that I broke. I'm trying to pick a GG actually. Too much force on those serrated pins. Uh, what I did is I just ground it out, made a couple of flats, a bit like a pair of wide pliers. And now this actually clamps over the flats this lock and allows me to apply some tension to that core and I can get in under there with the curved pick and hit those pins which means I can open this lock which previously I couldn't with either of the previous two tension tools so if you want to pick a lock that doesn't have and won't fit a goat and it has a hex core that's the way to do it and that is all I have today I hope that's helpful and hopefully you'll be able to pick uh, tubular locks or certainly find it easier to pick tubular locks. Cheers.